Hare Krishna, everyone. Dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books right here in the live studios in Hyde, otherwise called The Haven, if you speak Anglo-Saxon, uh, here in the southeast part of England, right near the English Channel. <clears throat> and we are embarking, uh, continuing our journey, uh, hearing the pastimes of Sri Krishna. This hearing of the pastimes of Sri Krishna is the most powerful method of purifying the heart and uncovering our attraction for Krishna. There's no more powerful process of, devo of, of spiritual advancement than this. It is pure devotional service. It's the most important devotional service to hear and to chant the glories of Krishna, his holy name and his holy pastimes. So Srimad Bhagavata Mahima Stotram, we sanctify the atmosphere first by reciting Srila Sanatan Goswami's glorification of the Srimad Bhagavatam before we hear Srila Prabhupada's masterpiece, the summary study of the 10th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam Mahimastotram, it goes like this. Sarva Shastravdipi Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dvandodita Ditya, Sri Krishna Parivartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali. You are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume I bow down to you, who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguro Mad Mahadana Mannis Dadagamad Bhagya Mad Ananda Namostute My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy. I bow down to you. Asadu saduta dayin atini chotata kara hanamun chagadachin mam prem na ret kanta yoksfura. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen. Please, never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So yesterday we heard the beautiful chapter describing the autumn season. And now we're going to hear how Krishna reacted to it. Chapter 21 The Gopis Attracted by the Flute With the arrival of the beautiful autumn season, the waters and the lakes and rivers became as clear as crystal and filled with fragrant lotus flowers. 
and breezes blew very pleasantly. At that time, Krishna entered the forest of Vrindavan with the cows and cowherd boys. Krishna was very much pleased with the atmosphere of the forest, where flowers bloomed and bees and drones hummed very jubilantly, while the birds, trees and plants were all looking very happy. Krishna, tending the cows and accompanied by Sri Balarama and the cowherd boys, began to vibrate his transcendental flute. After hearing the vibration of the flute of Krishna, the gopis in Vrindavan remembered him and began to talk amongst themselves about how nicely Krishna was playing his flute. When the gopis were describing the sweet vibration of Krishna's flute, they also remembered their pastimes with him. Thus, their minds became disturbed and they were unable to describe completely the beautiful vibration. While discussing the transcendental vibration, they remembered also how Krishna dressed, decorated with a peacock feather <clears throat> on his, on his uh, head, just like a dancing actor, and with blue flowers pushed over his ear. His garment glowed yellow gold, and he was garlanded with a Vajrayanti necklace, dressed in such an attractive way. Krishna filled up the holes of his flute with the nectar emanating from his lips. So they remembered him, entering the forest of Vrindavan, which is always glorified by the footprints of Krishna and his companions. Krishna was very expert in playing the flute, and the gopis were captivated by the sound vibration, which was attractive not only to them, but to all living creatures who, who heard it. One of the gopis told her friends, the highest perfection of the eyes is to see Krishna and Balarama entering the forest and playing their flutes and tending the cows with their friends. Persons who are constantly engaged in the transcendental meditation of seeing Krishna internally and externally by thinking of him playing the flute, entering the Vrindavan forest and tending the cows with the cowherd boys have really attained the perfection of samadhi. Samadhi, trance, means absorption of all the activities of the senses in a particular object. And the gopis indicate that the pastimes of Krishna are the perfection of all meditation and samadhi. It is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita that anyone who is always absorbed in the thought of Krishna is the topmost of all yogis. Another gopi expressed her opinion that Krishna and Balarama, while tending the cows with the cowherd boys, appeared just like actors going to play on a dramatic stage. Krishna was dressed in glowing garments of yellow, Balarama in blue, and they held new twigs of mango tree, peacock feathers, and bunches of flowers in their hands. Dressed with garlands of flo lotus flowers, they were sometimes singing very sweetly among, among their friends. One gopi told her friends, How is it Bal Krishna and Balarama are looking so beautiful? Another gopi said, My dear friends, we cannot even think of his bamboo flute. What sort of pious activities did it execute? so that it is now enjoying the nectar of the lips of Krishna, which is actually the property of us gopis. Sometimes, Krishna sometimes kisses the gopis. Therefore, the transcendental nectar of his lips is available only to them. So the gopis asked, How is it possible that the flute, which is nothing but a bamboo rod, is always en engaged in enjoying the nectar from Krishna's lips. Because the flute 
is engaged in the service of the Supreme Lord, the mother and the father of the flute must be very happy. The lakes and the rivers are considered to be the mothers of the trees because the trees live simply by drinking water. So the waters of the lakes and rivers of Vrindavan were in a happy mood, full of blooming lotus flowers, because the waters were thinking, how is it that our son, the bamboo rod, is enjoying the nectar of Krishna's lips? The bamboo trees standing by the banks of the rivers and the lakes were also happy to see their descendant so engaged in the service of the Lord. Just as persons who were advanced in transcendental knowledge take pleasure in seeing their descendants engage in the service of the Lord. The trees were overwhelmed with joy and were incessantly yielding honey which flowed from the beehives hanging on their branches. Another gopi spoke thus to her friends about Krishna. Dear friends, our Vrindavan is proclaiming the glories of this entire earth because this planet is glorified by the lotus footprints of the son of Devaki. Besides that, when Govinda plays his flute, the peacocks immediately become mad as if they had heard the rumbling of a new cloud. When all the animals and trees and plants, either on the top of Govardhan Hill or in the valley, see the dancing of the peacocks, they stand still and listen to the transcendental sound of the flute with great attention. We think that this boon is not possible or available on any other planet. Although the gopis were village cowherd women and girls, they had extensive Vedic knowledge, such as the effect of Vedic civilization. People in general would learn the highest truths of the Vedas simply by hearing from authoritative sources. Another gopi said, My dear friends, just see the deer. Although they are dumb animals, they have approached the son of Maharaj Nanda, Krishna. Not only are they attracted by the dress of Krishna in Balarama, but as soon as they hear the playing of the flute, the deer, along with their husbands, offer respectful obeisances unto the Lord by looking at Him with great affection. The gopis were envious of the deer because the deer were able to offer their service to Krishna along with their husbands. The gopis thought themselves not so fortunate because whenever they wanted to go to Krishna, their husbands were not very happy. Another gopi said, my dear friends, Krishna is so nicely dressed that he appears to be the impetuous, the another gopi said, My dear friends, Krishna is so nicely dressed that he appears to be the impetus to various kinds of ceremonies held by the women folk. Even the wives of the denizens of heaven become attracted after hearing the transcendental sound of his flute. Although they are traveling in the air, in their airplanes, enjoying the company of their husbands, on hearing the sound of Krishna's flute, they immediately become perturbed. Their hair is loosened and their tight belts are slackened. This means that the transcendental sound of the flute of Krishna extended to all corners of the universe. Also, it is significant that the gopis knew about the different kinds of airplanes flying in the sky. Another gopi said to her friends, My dear friends, the cows are also charmed as soon as they hear the transcendental sound of the flute of Krishna. It sounds to them like the pouring of nectar and they immediately spread their long ears just to catch the liquid nectar of the flute. As for the calves, they are seen with the nipples of their mothers pressed in their mouths, but they cannot suck the milk. They remain struck with devotion and tears 
glide down from their eyes, illustrating vividly how they are embracing Krishna heart to heart. These phenomena indicate that even the cows and calves in Vrindavan knew how to cry for Krishna and embrace him heart to heart. Actually, the perfection of Krishna consciousness can be culminated in the shedding of tears from the eyes. Another young gopi told his mother, My dear mother, the birds who are all looking at Krishna playing on his flute are sitting very attentively on the branches and twigs of different trees. From their features, it appears that they have gotten everything and are engaged only from their features. It appears that they have forgotten everything and are, in, and are engaged only in hearing Krishna's flute. This proves that they are not ordinary birds. They are great sages and devotees. And just to hear Krishna's flute, they have appeared in Vrindavan forest as birds. Great sages and scholars are interested in Vedic knowledge, but the essence of Vedic knowledge is stated in the Bhagavad Gita, Vidaish Chesar Bayar Aham Eva Vedyaha. Through the knowledge of the Vedas, Krishna has to be understood. From the behavior of these birds, it appears that they were great scholars in Vedic knowledge and that they took to Krishna's transcendental vibration and rejected all branches of Vedic knowledge. Even the river Yamuna, very much desiring to embrace the lotus feet of, of Krishna after hearing the transcendental vibration of his flute, broke her fierce waves to flow very nicely with lotus flowers in her hands. Just to present flowers to Mukunda with deep feeling. The scorching heat of the autumn sunshine was something intolerable and therefore the clouds in the sky appeared in sympathy over Krishna and Balarama and their friends, boyfriends, while they engaged in blowing their flutes. The clouds served as a soothing umbrella over their heads just to make friendship with Krishna. The aborigine girls became fully satisfied when they smeared their faces and breasts with the dust of Vrindavan which was reddish from the touch of Krishna's lotus feet. The aborigine girls had very full breasts and they were also very lusty. But when their lovers touched their breasts, the girls were not very much satisfied. When they came out of the midst of, into the midst when they came out into the midst of the forest, they saw that while Krishna was walking, some of the leaves and creepers of Vrindavan had turned reddish from the kum kum powder which fell from his lotus feet. His lotus feet are held by the gopis on their breasts which are smeared with kum kum powder. But when Krishna travels in the Vrindavan forest with Balarama and his boyfriends, the reddish powder falls on the ground. So the lusty aborigine girls, while looking toward Krishna, playing his flute, saw the reddish kum kum on the ground and immediately took it and smeared it over their faces and breasts. In this way they became fully satisfied, although they were not satisfied when their lovers touched their breasts. All material lusty desires can be immediately satisfied if one comes in contact with Krishna consciousness. Another gopi began to praise the unique position of Govardhan Hill in this way. How fortunate is this Govardhan hill, for it is enjoying the association of Lord Krishna and Balarama, who are accustomed to walking on it. Thus Govardhan is always in touch with the lotus feet of the Lord. And because Govardhan hill is so ob <clears throat> obliged to Lord Krishna and Balarama, it is supplying different kinds of fruits, roots and herbs as well as very pleasing crystal water from its lakes <clears throat> in presentation to the Lord. The best presentation 
offered by Govardhan Hill, however, is newly grown grass for the cows and calves. Govardhan Hill knows how to please the Lord by pleasing his most beloved associates, the cows and the cowherd boys. Another gopi said, Everything appears wonderful when Krishna and Balarama travel in the forest of Vrindavan, playing their flutes and making intimate friendship with all kinds of moving and non-moving living creatures. When Krishna and Balarama play on their transcendental flutes, the moving creatures become stunned and stop their activities. And the non-moving living creatures, like trees and plants, began to shiver with ecstasy. These are the wonderful reactions to the vibration of the transcendental flutes of Krishna and Balarama. Krishna and Balarama carried binding ropes on their shoulders and in their hands, just like ordinary cowherd boys. While milking cows, cowherd boys bind the cow's hind legs with a small rope. This rope almost always hangs from the shoulders of cowherd boys and it was not absent from the shoulders of Krishna and Balarama. In spite of their being the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they played exactly like cowherd boys, and therefore everything became wonderful and attractive. While Krishna was engaged <clears throat> while Krishna was engaged in tending the cows in the forest of Vrindavan or, or on Govardhan Hill, the gopis in the village were always absorbed in thinking of him and discussing his different pastimes. This is the perfect example of Krishna consciousness to somehow or other remain always engrossed in thoughts. Of Krishna. The vivid example is always present in the behavior of the gopis. Therefore, Lord Chaitanya declared that no one can worship the Supreme Lord by any method which is better than the method of the gopis. The gopis were not born in a very high Brahmana or Kshatriya families. <clears throat> they were born in the families of Vaishyas and not in big mercantile communities, but in the families of cowherd men. They were not very well educated, although they heard all sorts of knowledge from the brahmanas, the authorities of Vedic knowledge. The gopi's only purpose was to remain always absorbed in thoughts of Krishna. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 21st chapter of Krishna. The gopis attracted by the flute. All glories to the Vrindavan forest, especially in autumn, which attracted Krishna to, the, to, to it. And the flutes, songs of Krishna, which attracted the minds of everyone, especially the gopis. Hare Krishna. Okay. We're going on. Chapter 22 Stealing the Garments of the Unmarried Gopi Girls According to Vedic civilization, unmarried girls from 10 to 14 years of age are supposed to worship either Lord Shiva or Goddess Durga in order to get a nice husband. But the unmarried girls of Vrindavan were already attracted by the beauty of Krishna. They were, there, they were, however, engaged in the worship of Goddess Durga in the beginning of the Hemanta season, just prior to the winter season. The first month of Hemanta is Agrahayana, October-November. And at that time, all the unmarried gopis of Vrindavan began to worship Goddess Durga with a vow they first ate havishana, a kind of food prepared 
by boiling together mung dal and rice without any spices or turmeric. According to Vedic injunction, this kind of food is recommended to purify the body before one enacts a ritualistic ceremony. All the unmarried gopis in Vrindavan used to daily worship goddess Katyayani early in the morning after taking a bath in the river Yamuna. Katyayani is another name for goddess Durga. The goddess is worshipped by preparing a doll made of sand from the bank of the Yamuna. It is recommended in the Vedic scriptures that a deity be made from different kinds of material elements. It can be painted, made of metal, made of jewels, made of wood, earth, or stone, or can be conceived within the heart of the worshipper. The Mayavadi philosopher takes all these forms of the deity to be imaginary, but actually they are accepted in the Vedic scriptures to be identical with either the Supreme Lord or a respective demigod. The unmarried girls used to prepare the deity of goddess Durga and worship it with chandan pulp, garlands, incense, lamps, and all kinds of presentations, fruits, grain, and twigs of plants. After worshipping, it is the custom to pray for some benediction. The unmarried girls used to pray with great devotion to Goddess Katyayani, addressing her as follows, O Supreme External Energy of the Personality of Godhead, O Supreme Mystic Power, O Supreme Controller of this material world, O Goddess, please be kind to us and arrange for our marriage with the son of Nanda Maharaj, Krishna. The Vaishnavas generally do not worship any demigods. Srila Das Thakur has strictly forbidden all worship of the demigods for anyone who wants to advance in pure devotional service. Yet the gopis, who are beyond compare in their affection for Krishna, were seen to worship Durga. The worshippers of demigods sometimes mention that the gopis worshipped goddess Durga, but we must understand the purpose of the gopis. Generally, people worship goddess Durga for some material benediction. Here, the gopis prayed to the goddess to become wives of Lord Krishna. The purport is, that if Krishna is the center of activity, a devotee can adopt any means to achieve that goal. The gopis could adopt any means to satisfy or serve Krishna. That was the super excellent character of the gopis. They worshipped Goddess Durga completely for one month in order to have Krishna as their husband. Every day, they prayed for Krishna, the son of Nanda Maharaj, to become their husband. Early in the mornings, the gopis used to go to the bank of the Yamuna to take a bath. They would assemble together and holding one another's hands, loudly sing of the wonderful pastimes of Krishna. It is an old system among Indian girls and women that when they take a bath in the river, they place their garments on the bank and dip into the water completely naked. The portion of the river where the girls and women bathe was strictly prohibited to any male, and this is still the system. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, knowing the minds of the unmarried gopis, young gopis, blessed them with their desired objective. They had prayed for Krishna to become their husband, and Krishna wanted to fulfill their desires. At the end of the month, Krishna, along with his friends, appeared on the scene. Another name of Krishna is Yogeshwar, or master of all mystic powers. By practicing meditation, the yogi can study the psychic movement of other men. And certainly, Krishna could understand the desire of the gopis. Appearing on the scene, Krishna immediately collected all the garments of the gopis, 
climbed up into a nearby tree and with a smiling face began to speak to them. <laughs> My dear girls, he said, please come here one after another and pray for your garments and then take them away. I'm not joking with you. I'm just telling the truth. I have no desire to play any joke with you for you are tired from observing the regulated principles for one month by worshiping goddess Katyayani. Please do not come here all at once. Come alone. I want to see each of you in your complete beauty for you all have thin waists. I have requested you to come alone. Now please comply. When the girls in the water heard such joking words from Krishna, they began to look at one another and smile. They were very joyous to hear such a request from Krishna because they were already in love with him. Out of shyness, they looked at one another, but they could not come out of the water because they were naked. Due to remaining in the water for a long time, they felt cold and were shivering. Yet upon hearing the pleasing, joking words of Govinda, their minds were perturbed with great joy. They told Krishna, Dear son of Nanda Maharaj, please do not joke with us in that way. It is completely unjust to us. You are a very respectable boy because you are the son of Nanda Maharaj and you are very dear to us. But you should not play this joke on us because now we are all shivering from the cold water. Kindly deliver our garments immediately, otherwise we shall suffer. They then began to appeal to Krishna with great submission. Dear Shamasundar, they said, we are all your eternal servitors. Whatever you order us to do, we are obliged to perform without hesitation because we consider it our religious duty. But if you insist on putting this proposal to us, which is impossible to perform, then certainly we will have to go to Nanda Maharaj and lodge a complaint against you. If Nanda Maharaj does not take action, then we shall tell King Kangsa about your misbehavior. Upon hearing this appeal by the unmarried gopis, Krishna answered, my dear girls, if you think that you are my eternal servitors and you are ready, always ready to execute my order, then my request is that with your smiling faces you please come here alone, one after another, and take away your garments. If you do not come here, however, and if you lodge complaints with my father, I shall not care anyway, for I know my father is old, and cannot do any action against me, take any action against me. When the gopis saw that Krishna was strong and determined, they had no alternative but to abide by his order. One after another, they came out of the water, but because they were completely naked, they tried to cover their nakedness by placing their left hand over their pubic area. In that posture, they were all shivering. They simply, their, their simple presentation was so pure that Lord Krishna immediately became pleased with them. All the unmarried gopis who prayed to Katyayani to have Krishna as, as their husband were also satisfied. A woman cannot be naked before any male except her husband. The unmarried gopis desired Krishna as their husband and he fulfilled their desire in this way. Being pleased with them, he took their garments on his shoulders and began to speak as follows. My dear girls, you have committed a great offense by going naked in the river Yamuna. Because of this, the predominating deity of the Yamuna, Varunadev, Varuna has become displeased with you. Please, therefore, just touch your foreheads with folded palms and bow down before the demigod Varuna in order to be excused from this offensive act. <laughs> the gopis were all simple souls 
and whatever Krishna said, they took to be true. In order to be freed and ultimately to please their worshipable Lord, Krishna, they immediately abide by, abided by his order. Thus they became the greatest lovers of Krishna and his most obedient servitors. Nothing can compare with the Krishna consciousness of the gopis. Actually, the gopis did not care for Varuna or any other demigod. They only wanted to satisfy Krishna. Krishna became very ingratiated and satisfied by the simple dealings of the gopis and he immediately delivered their respective garments one after another. Although Krishna cheated the young unmarried gopis and made them stand naked before him and enjoyed joking words with them, and although he treated them just like dolls and stole their garments, they were still pleased with him and never lodged complaints against him. This attitude of the gopis is described by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu when he prays, My dear Lord Krishna, you may embrace me or trample me under your feet or you may make me broken hearted by never being present before me. Whatever you like, you can do because you have complete freedom to act. But in spite of all your dealings, you are my Lord eternally and I have no other worshipable object this is the attitude of the gopis toward Krishna. Lord Krishna was pleased with them, and since they all desired to have him as their husband, he told them, My dear well-behaved girls, I know of your desire for me and why you worshipped Goddess Katyayani, and I completely approve of your action. Anyone whose full consciousness is always absorbed in me, even if in lust, is elevated. As a fried seed cannot fructify, so any desire in connection with my loving service cannot produce any fruitive result, as in ordinary karma. There is a statement in the Brahma Sangita, karmani nir dahati kin tu bhakti bhajam, Everyone is bound by his fruity act, fruitive activities. But the devotees, because they work completely for the satisfaction of the Lord, suffer no reactions. Similarly, the gopis' attitude toward Krishna, although seemingly lusty, should not be considered to be like the lusty desires of ordinary women. The reason is explained by Krishna himself activities in devotional service to Krishna are transcendental to any fruitive result. My dear gopis, Krishna continued, your desire to have me as your husband will be fulfilled because it is with this desire that you worshipped goddess Katyayani. I promise you that during the next autumn season you shall be able to meet with me and you shall enjoy me as your husband. Later, later, Krishna, in the company of his cowherd boyfriends, took shelter of the shade of some trees and became very happy. Thus he addressed the inhabitants of Vrindavan. My dear Stoka Krishna, my dear Varutapa, my dear Bhadrasena, my dear Sridama, my dear Suval, my dear Arjuna, my dear Vishal, my dear Rishava. Just look at these most fortunate trees of Vrindavan. They have dedicated their lives to the welfare of others. Individually, they are tolerating all kinds of natural disturbances, such as hurricanes, torrents of rain, scorching heat, and piercing cold but they are very careful to relieve our fatigue and give, us, and give us shelter. My dear friends, I think they are glorified in this birth as trees. They are so careful to give shelter to others that they are like noble, highly elevated, charitable men 
who never deny charity to one who approaches them. No one is denied shelter by these trees. They supply various kinds of facilities to human societies, such as leaves, flowers, fruit, shade, roots, bark, flavor extracts, and fuel. They are the perfect examples of noble life. They are like a noble person who has sacrificed everything possible, his body, mind, activities, intelligence, and words for the welfare of all living beings, of all living entities. Thus, the Supreme Personality of Godhead walked on the bank of the Yamuna, touching the leaves of the trees and their fruits, flowers, and twigs, and praising their glorious wel welfare activities. Different people may accept certain welfare activities to be beneficial for human society, according to their own views, but the welfare activity that can be rendered to people in general for eternal benefit is the spreading of the Krishna consciousness movement. Everyone should be prepared to propagate this movement. As instructed by Lord Chaitanya, one should be humbler than the grass and the ground and more tolerant than the tree. The toleration of the tree is explained by Lord Krishna himself and those who are engaged in the preaching of Krishna consciousness should learn lessons from the teachings of Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya through their direct disciplic succession. While passing through the forest of Vrindavan on the bank of the Yamuna, Krishna sat down at a beautiful spot and allowed the cows to drink the cold and transparent water of the Yamuna. Being fatigued, the cowherd boys, Krishna and Balarama, also drank. After seeing the young gopis bathe in the Yamuna, Krishna passed the rest of the morning with the boys. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 22nd chapter of Krishna, stealing the garments of the unmarried gopi girls. Jai, all glories to the pure devotion of the gopis. So simple and pure. All glories to the cowherd boys and all the residents of Vrindavan Dham. Hare Krishna. Exactly 8 o'clock. Right in the second. Okay. We'll stop here. And just eagerly awaiting reflections on what we just read. Anything that's stuck in our mind that we heard that we'd like to elaborate upon. Hare Krishna. Raja Lakshmi Mataji said Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Raj Lakshmi Hare Bo Hare Bo. Dear Mom, we we miss you. Gopakanya Devidasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all friends, all grace to Srila Prabhupada in your daily reading service of Sri Krishna Kata Maharaj. All glories to you. Hare Krishna. From Yadu Tama, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, you do, you do Tama. Hare Krishna, Gurudev, my obeisances, and all glories to Prabhupada. Jai Ho. From Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada's books. Die. All glories to Srila Prabhupada's books. Nice reflection. <laughs> Bhakta Rupa Prabhu. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept. Hey Bhakta Rupa, Hare Krishna. My humble obeisances been really inspired by this Krishna book readings recently. After last night's reading, I decided I would only distribute Krishna book today. I asked Gopal Roy Prabhu for his blessings to be able to distribute 25 Krishna books this morning. And he said it wasn't enough and said I had his blessing to distribute 30. <laughs> <laughs> so I filled my book chole to the brim. <laughs> we read Autumn in Vrindavan together on the way to the street and discussed all the details, which was amazing. Amazing. Had such <clears throat> an amazing day talking about Krishna book to so many souls and they love to hear about Krishna's pastimes <laughs> and look at the paintings inside and take the books. I even met someone and asked 
if he had ever met a monk and he unbelievably said he once met Keshava Bharati and attended one of his questions and answer sessions. Wow. Was such a nice day and I managed to distribute all 30 Krishna books with 30 minutes to spare. Wow. If only I had brought more. <laughs> Thanks for your inspiration, Maharaj. Oh, you so much. Well, thank you very much. That brought back some warm memories, fond memories. <laughs> I used to sit in the library upstairs in the temple in, in So Street, on So, so Street, and, and conduct the question and answer session every day, between t 3 and 12 hours a day, every day. Whoever came, I'd stay there as long as anyone would come mm. to ask questions. I learned so much about how to preach during that time. I met so many nice people, and some of them became devotees during the seven years I was doing that in mm. Soul Street. And that, m many years later, more than 20 years later, a couple of them got initiated for me. <laughs> Amazing. So now I've heard that, you know, there's things are, the activities in the, in the temple are becoming uh, extraordinary. And they're starting a new preaching program. And uh, yeah, it's just like Prabhupada said in the end of this mm -hmm. chapter. If we just dedicate our lives to the instructions of Srila Prabhupada to Lord Chaitanya and distribute this Krishna consciousness somehow or other our lives become perfected and what uh, what Bhakti Rupa just said spoke of that very nicely how going out speaking about Krishna to the public and giving out the Krishna books gives the highest satisfaction the pleasure we get from speaking about Krishna to others, and especially by giving Prabhupada's books out to others, is indescribable. Mm. Indescribably powerful. The most potent, powerful means of purification and awakening, awakening our ecstatic feelings for Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much for that reflection. from R Raja Lakshmi Mataji All material lusty desires can be satisfied if one come in contact with Krishna consciousness very powerful statement grateful to Prabhupada and yourselves for continually nurturing our Krishna consciousness Well what can I say except the person that's getting the most benefit I think is me because I'm reading every day these mm -hmm. things it's so nice. Hare Krishna. Anyway, thank you so much. From Ananda Moti Devidasi Mataji. Jai, please accept Mahabur Baisenses. Jai Ananda Moti. Oglas to Shri Prabhupada. Today I understand how the gopis are focusing everything to Krishna in their life. Yes. That's the secret. Give yourself to Krishna consciousness. Body, mind, words, intelligence, everything. Hare Krishna. Lion's heart Christopher said Hare Krishna. Lion heart Christopher. Well, Hare Krishna, Lion heart. Rati Manjai Mataji said Jai Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Rati. <coughs> Raja Rukha Mataji said Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, Bhaja Loka. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you for another amazing reading today. It was so nice to hear about Govardhan. I like the point that Giraj offered so many nice things to Krishna and Balaram, of which the green grass is the most important, because he knows that he must please the Lord by pleasing his dear companions, the cows and the cart boys. It's a very attractive meditation. And the nice 
deadline for me for my everyday life yes absolutely so fortunate if one is able to do their daily duties and live their lives remembering Krishna that's it that's it that's the goal of life it's the, you cannot do anything more auspicious than that except to give it to others Hare Krishna mm -hmm. and I know Rajaloka is always uh, taking care of new devotees and, and making devotees Krishna conscious Hare Krishna mm -hmm. From Raja Lakshmi Mataji, Krishna is Yogeshwar, he knows that. He knows all our desires, both dormant and manifest. Please bless that we develop the desire to please Krishna and Vaishnavas. Hare Krishna, so be it. May it, may it be true. Raja Loka Mataji. Actually, in your case, it already is true. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Raja Loka Mataji. I would also like to hear about the patience and tolerance of the trees mm. in connection to the necessary mood of a preacher. Mm. As I experience, if I accept this mission of taking part of preaching Krishna consciousness, mm. even if we do not have all the required qualities, the process of preaching itself helps us to develop the required properties. Very nice. Very nice reflection. I'd like to commend you on that and point it out to everyone this is pure Krishna consciousness Hare Krishna from Rati Manjai Haribo Rati Mataji she said dear Guru Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances I came late tonight because we went to the Vandal Park and I had a nice program with many young people dancing and chanting with us all oh, glories to the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Wow, I went I went to the Wonder Park in 1970, but I had a little different experience. I was b busking with a guitar and <laughs> <laughs> and uh, hanging out with the hippies. And but now you're doing the real thing. <laughs> Just see, Hare Krishna. One boy stood behind and asked me many questions, and I sacrificed some of the reading to answer his many questions oh good for you that's real renunciation he was into stoicism but now he will read bhagavad gita as it is harry ball harry ball oh, oh, glorious to your successful preaching from what i heard tonight it occurred to me that krishna really reciprocates with his devotees on the level where they are in yes. this material world Things are so complicated, but between Krishna and his gopis, things are so simple and sweet and pure. What a relief just to think about it. Yes, and especially the way Srila Prabhupada expresses these ideas, isn't it? It's so simple and pure. It's, it's transcendental, it's profound. It's very profound. A contaminated intelligence will just get bored listening to these simple words. But one who is actually <coughs> eager to hear about Krishna becomes elevated to the topmost position just by hearing these simple, pure, yet profound words and descriptions of Krishna's glories and the glories of the devotional service and the methods of devotional service in Vrindavan which has nothing to do with forcing oneself to follow some regulated principles. They're spontaneously attracted to Krishna. That's where we want to go. So if we perform the austerities of the, of the regulated principles very sincerely with the desire to awaken our remembrance of Krishna, then we will become spontaneous devotees and please Krishna in the nicest way possible. Hare Krishna. Bhakta Rupa Prabhu. Yesterday you mentioned how Otan in Vrindavan was a perfect chapter for preaching. Today I was able to remember the analogy of the rainbow not requiring a bowstring when a Christian asked if Krishna <laughs> came in a metal body. 
Yeah, and he understood it really well. Oh, fantastic. Such powerful analogies. Oh, fantastic. This is called active reading. I would like to promote this idea to everyone. Active reading means it's not just for me, but I'm reading in order to find nice things to say to people to attract them to Krishna consciousness. Mm. And that active reading is ecstatic. From Roger Lokamataji. Dear Guru Maharaj, thank you very much for engaging me. I'm so grateful for all your guidance and encouragement and for your trust. All glories to you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Glories to you and your devotional service. Thank you very much, everyone. This was the nicest day of reflections that I can remember. I'll always remember these reflections and try to take them into my heart and follow them as much as possible, even though I'm still kind of kind of restricted in my mobility. But still, just by hearing in the association of you all, what can I say? I'm happy. I, I've never been happier. I'm, as, I'm the least active than I've ever been in my life, but I'm happier than ever. Hare Krishna. All glories to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's Sankirtan movement. All glories to Srila Prabhupada for sacrificing his life to write all these wonderful transcendental literatures. And all glories to the devotees who relish hearing them together. Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Kijai. Samabeda Bhakta Brinda, Kijai. Gor Prem Anandi Hari Hari Bo. So let's come back tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic as Krishna's pastimes unfold before our ears. Hari Krishna.